Hello everyone and welcome back to another community update for the Pixel Biology channel. I am so excited. I've been thinking about this update all week because I have been so excited to know that like, yeah, Sunday I get a chance to talk to them again. It's going to be so awesome and it is so awesome. So hello everyone. I hope you are having an absolutely wonderful day. I am very much enjoying my day because you can hear Ossie Jr. over there. Oh, I pointed at him, so he's like, whoa, goodness. But he is singing his little heart out the last few days. He's feeling pretty good. All the other birds are starting to like molt, and so they get a little cranky. They don't feel their best during molting, but he hasn't quite started his molt yet, so he's over there just has a little chest puffed up, and he's just singing his little heart out, and it's the cutest thing in the world. But I am very, very, very excited to give you some big updates this week, you guys. So here on the Pixel Biology channel, we had a little bit of an alarming Tuesday. On last Tuesday, I was just kind of processing videos and getting everything ready to go for the channel and my computer, my little laptop, which is actually down by my feet right now, it started smoking. So little bits of smoke started to poof out of uh, the fan. That's never a good thing. So we looked it up and that particular model of laptop is known for eventually having some heating issues. Um, but like we turned the laptop over and there was like cracks and you could see where it's charred, the plastic a little bit from the heating so with the smoke poofing out we didn't know if like my laptop was about to explode we started calling it like old smokestack so we were kind of worried about the laptop and the thing is if my laptop died that meant I had nothing to be able to make videos I had no way of being able to tell you guys anything because for some reason Twitter doesn't want to show up on my phone so I would have been like I would have been stranded it would have been like if a plane had gone down and I was alone in the wilderness like in Hatchet which was a really good book I loved when I was younger but it was really alarming and spooky like that because I was like if this happens and I lose my computer I can't do anything at all. So I went ahead and I pulled out my money from savings that I had been saving up and we have a new PC. I'm so excited, it has a hyena on it right now. You can't see the hyena, but um, Darling set it up so it has like African wildlife rotating on the back screen, which is really fun, my little desktop. So I actually have a proper desktop PC now and it's amazing. And so you guys um, don't have to worry about like episodes disappearing because of computer issues anymore because you know, old Smokestack, who's hanging out by my feet right now, <laughs> is a fantastic laptop for having gotten our channel this far, but I'm definitely not going to be relying on something that seems like it's going to catch fire and explode any, any second for the future of our channel. So this was a huge investment made 100% for you guys so that I can continue to make sure we get adventures out so that I can have um, more powerful processing and video cards so that all of the content looks really awesome. The Minecraft episodes have started to come out in a much higher resolution than I normally prepare them in. It takes a little longer, but it's totally worth it because now those of you, because I know there's actually a big chunk of you guys who watch the episodes on a television, it'll look really smooth and good for you. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and happy that Smokestack still works so far, but I'm not going to rely on a laptop that might explode any second. <laughs> so I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. But yeah, new computer means huge things. It means I can hopefully, between that and the phone, um, a lot of equipment upgrades lately so that I can try to start really feeling like I'm professional enough to go and actually interview like PhD doctorates uh, who are like masters and experts, worldwide experts in their field of sciences. Um, those are things that I want to have coming up. And I'm still trying to figure out how to build up to that level of professionalism and that level of like, yes, I would like to be allowed to see the access of the lemurs in Duke University and I would really love a behind the scenes tour of your zoo institution. <laughs> It's like, how do you just convince people to let you do that? And I want to make sure I show them it's because it's for you guys. It's for thousands of people. And many of you are excited about those interviews because it might provide opportunities to understand those jobs better and those fields that so that maybe one day you want to go and become a scientist in those fields. And it helps a lot more when you can actually see the reality of what it is to work there or hear from one of those scientists why they're so excited and passionate about what they do. So that is what I'm going to be looking out for. That is what I hope to have coming up in the future for our channel. But for right now, so thank you guys so much for your zoo crafting feedback. Um, last week, it meant so much to have you guys tell me what your favorite series were. Zoo crafting pretty much like swept the board. And to understand, like, and I asked you guys, do you, would it be okay if I did every other day zoo crafting? And a lot of you guys were like, no, no, daily, I want my daily zoo crafting. And that made me feel better, because you guys were like, it's fine if the episodes are shorter as long as it's daily, because it's such a habit. It's almost two years, two whole years 
years. I've been doing this now. We're going to start our third year on December the 24th. So this is going to be kind of exciting. I'm really excited about that. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty hyped. I'm like, yay. So that's going to be fun. So Zoo Crafting is going to remain a daily series. The episodes might start falling a little bit short of the 20 minute mark. But it's really weird because I'm beginning to learn that I prefer some things to, like some of the things that I watch to kind of fall a little bit short of the 20 minute mark. But we'll still have our hour long Saturday special. And if things start feeling like we want to get more done, of course we can always expand that time or we can always have side quests. So that'll be happening. I've been trying to include more educational content in some of the Zoo Crafting episodes. If you guys enjoyed seeing pictures of the real life animals that we're trying to put into our zoos, I feel like it's a good way just to do a quick overlay of here's a picture of what it looks like. Um, and hopefully I got the picture right because apparently like the ring neck blue parrots that some sources were telling me you can find all over the place in Australia as wild. They might be having wild pockets in Australia, the blue neck ring parrots, but they're from India. So they're native to India, even if you can find wild pockets of them in Australia. So I need to like go back and it's hard because sometimes you have to correct yourself, but the video is permanent and it's already there and you're, you have to do like either annotations, which don't show up on a lot of formats anymore. So like if I put an annotation on something, sometimes that won't show up on somebody's phone when they're watching from their phone. So they're going to be like, Siri, the ring neck parrot is not in Australia, it's from India. But like the Quaker parrot um, is not native to Texas, but there's large populations of Quaker parrots roaming in Texas because they've been released. The Burmese python is not native to Florida, but there's large populations of Burmese python. There are species that just take off in their niche, and apparently the blue, the Indian blue neck, blue ring neck parrot is one of those species. So it's really fun to share those kinds of extra educational bits with you guys. But sometimes it's tricky because if I get it wrong, it's trying to like correct myself in the future or figure out a way to show you guys like, I don't consider myself an expert in anything. I consider myself passionate about everything. And it's always good to double check your sources and then triple check them and then understand that science changes sometimes. So check them yearly, annually to see what the new things are saying. I mean, look how many times the panda bear and the red panda have been reclassified all over the place, especially as more genetic research comes out. But I'm segueing because I love these topics. So we will resume. Let's see. Um, yeah, zoo crafting is going to stay daily. I'm super excited. And here's the thought for you guys. Should we begin the third year of zoo crafting? I'm thinking we'll start seasons. So the third season of zoo crafting will be the third year. We won't move worlds. We'll stay where we are, but it'll just make it easier to kind of break it into chunks. So the third season of zoo crafting will begin when the second year of zoo crafting ends and the third year begins. But should that be and like on the 24th of December, or should we just start on the 1st of January, like follow the proper year? I'm kind of tempted to do the second thing because that would make it a little bit easier to celebrate zoo crafting like as a new year thing, but maybe it's fun to celebrate it kind of around what is Christmas for a lot of people or winter holidays for a lot of people because then more people are home from school and we can all celebrate it, yay! Because so many of you are like growing up in school with zoo crafting, which is awesome. I hope I can help, that's my goal. But yeah, so there's that. So just a thought for you guys. Should it be on the 24th of December or the first of the year? What do you think would be a little bit more fun to start the third series on or the third season on? And then also I am I think I may have mentioned this last week and I've mentioned it in comments, I know, and I think I even mentioned it in the in the actual videos. But I'm beginning to think of um, trying to stream once, maybe twice a month for a few hours where we can do a zoo tour and a world tour depending on the day. So then you guys can come in in comments and you can be like, I really want to go check on the red wolves. I really want to go check on this. I really want to go check on that. And we can go there and I can pull up information and we can try to look up some of the most accurate and recent information about the different creatures who are in the zoo. And then I will re-upload those streams onto YouTube so that it's nice and easy for anyone who missed it. But I thought that would be a nice way of being able to review what we have in the zoo and what we have in the world and what new builds are in the world by everyone else who are just, oh, the other zoo crafters are doing amazing things. It's so exciting. But I thought that would be a fun way of kind of reviewing what we have because we often are always moving forward on the builds. And sometimes it'd be nice to step back and just tour and enjoy the zoo together and see maybe what's missing and come up with some ideas for the future. So let me know what you guys think of that. I think it would be really fun. I'm thinking probably stream on YouTube, maybe stream on Twitch, I'm not sure. Either way, the videos will end up on YouTube if I can help it. 
And then I'm also thinking, because it's taking so long to get the to the dinosaurs in zoo crafting, what do you guys think just offhand? I'm not sure if this is a thing, it's just an idea and I wanted to share it because that's what the community blogs are for, of a dino series spinoff. So doing Minecraft dinosaurs, um, kind of like a zoo crafting spinoff series. It would be in, kind of in a different world, maybe a different server. So we could just focus on prehistoric creatures, prehistoric cultures maybe. We might have like some sort of light role playing thing where there's some sort of like time warp bubble that pops random things in and we're like, oh my gosh, today it's a T-Rex. Oh my gosh, today it's somebody from this ancient civilization that we can talk about for a little while. So I'm thinking about maybe doing something like that because it is just taking so long to get two dinosaurs in the zoo crafting series and I still want to have them in zoo crafting, but I don't feel like I can really focus on them very well because my continual focus in zoo crafting seems to shift back to modern day education on conservation and creatures that exist now because I hope that what you guys can take away from all of the series that we do is a passion for this natural world, a passion for trying to help things out now. And it's kind of hard to help the dodo out because the dodo's dead. Kind of hard to help the velociraptor out because they're dead. <laughs> so uh, educate, like helping them out with education of their history and their species is really fun. But yeah, it's different than trying to save a turtle because the turtle is like in China right now. It's not, it's not already dead for the last four million years. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe Dino Series spinoff as a result. Twin Bark is about to get busy. So Twin Bark Town is still on one day a week right now just because it's really helping me feel less stressed and adjust. And especially this week when episodes went missing or were late or I wasn't able to do them. I didn't forget, I just wasn't able to do them because my PC was smoking and like I had to wait, my little laptop was smoking. I mean, I had to wait to build the PC. And building a new computer is really exhausting. Darling did all of it for me and setting it up physically and then picking out the parts and it's totally kick butt and it's amazing and I really love it but like putting all the software on there transferring all the files finding where the heck your new files are dealing with new drives it's very exhausting so that's why some of the things have been missing um but twin bark town I'm starting to feel a little more comfortable with it I'm starting to feel a little bit faster with it and so it'll hopefully really pick up in the future because we're going to start moving um more into like a rapid paced role play with it where we're gonna have these animals and it's gonna be like okay guys here's this turtle this turtle is up for adoption I wonder who's gonna adopt it and then I'll have videos on this in the future we're not doing this right now but I'll have videos on how we're gonna do this is then you can send in a picture of your turtle and you can be like this is my turtle uh, Stinson and I want to adopt like I, so I'm adopting this turtle in the game here's a picture of my real turtle here's a short like maybe four sentence story about him Stinson really loves swimming on like his around his favorite rock he really loves his favorite treat to be like right over here. I got him for my 14th birthday. I love Stinson. There you go. And that'll be the story. And so what we'll do is then I will share the picture of Stinson on the next episode of Twin Bark Town and be like, yay, Stinson had a successful adoption to his forever home. Here's his story. Just really quick story. And that way I want to start incorporating your guys' real pet stories and your real pets or if you don't have a pet and you wish you did, you can send in a fan art picture, like here's my drawing of what I wish was my turtle Stinson, and then a little story about that, and that'll count too. So that's how I wanna try to incorporate your guys' real pets, real passion for nature, real pet stories. I've always loved pet stories. Chicken soup for the pet lover's soul is like my favorite thing ever. Um, into Twin Bark Town. And then of course then Stinson's adopted out and we'll start probably having series where we go and we actually rescue, like go to physically rescue the creatures in Twin Bark. But we're gonna have a lot more animals come in. Like some days we might have like, wow, there's eight German Shepherds. And then if eight people send in pictures or drawings of German Shepherds that they have, then they get adopted out next time. And then of course there's gonna be situations where we have like 400 people <laughs> adopt the adorable Stinson turtle. And I can only pick one, but like that's just kind of like luck of the draw slash I'll try to figure out how we can manage that. We might, we might just have like a bonus episode where we share more bonus stories even if we don't have the actual creatures in the game. So we'll figure it out and try to make it fair for as many people as possible. I might even have like a special Google document where you can go and check if something has been adopted yet. Like it'll, it'll switch from like green to like, 
I don't know, blue or black, it's like adopted, so don't worry about it. And then you can know to keep an eye on that like Google document to see if there's gonna be a creature available for adoption that way and what kind of breed it is and uh, if it fits your family, if it fits what kind of pet you would like to send in fan art of or stuff like that. I'm it's totally experimental. I've not really seen anything like this before, so that's why it's so like, I don't know how it's gonna work. But that's twin bark, enough twin bark babble. Still working on trying to introduce zoo bites. I'm hoping maybe next week I could find the time to just make they're gonna be short they're gonna be sweet they're kind of gonna be like specimen spotlights they're kind of gonna be like exhibition Sundays less than 10 minutes most of the time maybe focusing on one particular aspect of one creature or one particular aspect of creatures in the news it's not really going to focus on the entire creatures life biology history breeding habits dietary needs and so on and so forth because um, I just want it to be enough to kind of spark your curiosity and then I'll hopefully have links in the video description so if you want to learn more about it off you go into the wilds of the internets and you can bring back some awesome finds and details to us in the comments and we can all learn and benefit from it so that'd be really awesome uh, yeah, and with the new PC, hopefully now I will be able to actually get the console gaming going again because I was having a lot of fun playing Harvest Moon Magical Melody. I want to play Harvest Moon Animal Parade. I want to do Rune Factory Frontier again. I want to do more Viva Pinata because we have so much we could do in Viva Pinata, but I don't think my laptop had the processing power to handle the Elgato, which is the little like thing, the little like hardware piece that you use to get the like Xbox content onto the Elgato into your computer. I don't think my laptop, even though the specs were above what the website said it could use, I don't think it had enough processing power for real. So hopefully, and so what happened is I recorded hours, hours until my voice started giving out of Viva Pinata and then it all corrupted. Like two or three hours of just straight like, yay, Pinata, yay, we're doing so much. Wow, we're accomplishing so much. Look at how cute these things are. And I lost it all. And that was crushing. I was ready to just like chuck my Elgato out of the window. I was like, oh my gosh, why? But hopefully with this new PC, uh, I know for a fact we have Sims 2 running. It loads in less than like 10 seconds. It's like, oh my goodness, I didn't know this game could be like this. Um, it loads in about five minutes with my 12 gigabytes of custom content. So <laughs> uh, I still have a lot of custom content. I need to make sure all that works. But Sims 2 is in, it works, it's fantastic, it's beautiful. I really wanna play Sims 2 again. Sims 3 is in, it's fantastic, it works, it's beautiful. I really wanna play the North Stars again. Sims 4 is in, it works, it's fantastic, it's beautiful. I really can't wait to play the Green Family and especially play Get Together when it comes out next month. I'm so hyped and excited about that. I'm so excited. It's gonna be awesome. We'll probably have like a special little like get together week where we just like dive in and enjoy the game for all it has to give. Um, so yeah, new PC opens tons of new possibilities. And new phone, tons of new possibilities with interviewing people and really just going out and enjoying what the world has to offer and sharing that with you guys. So I'm trying to think of anything else, but I think we're doing pretty good. Um, as always, if I haven't replied to some of your comments, I get over 800 to 900 to over 1,000 on weekends comments a day. That's too many for me to reply to, but I try my best when I have time. Um, let's see, what else is there that I could think of? Jurassic World, I'm having so much fun playing. I suck at it. Please be patient while I learn how to, how to play, and I really can't pronounce dinosaur names. I struggle badly with that. Um, let's see, and anything else? Uh, not that I can think of. So, as always, if you guys have questions, comments, ideas, leave them in the comments below. That is especially what this particular time of the week is for, is to open up that dialogue between you and I and the rest of the community and figure out how I can share my happy singing bird and just share some really awesome adventures with you guys. So I'm having a wonderful time, a wonderful day. I hope you guys are too. I cannot wait to share more adventures with you. I'm enjoying Shelter, by the way. So Shelter Spore, Jurassic World, some of the new things we're doing. We will be revisiting old things. We're just always doing so much here and I love it. And I love sharing it with you guys. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And remember, stay curious.